Hi folks! One fun way to make a solar cell is to simply cut open a power transistor like I've done here. I started with one of these transistors, the 2N3055. To get at the so-called solar cell material, you need to cut off the case, but very carefully because there are some delicate wires inside. I find that if you have a shallow case like this one, then it's best to cut near the backing and do many small cuts around the circumference. That way you have more control and you're less likely to slice the blade all the way through and cut those delicate wires. If you have a deep case like this one, then you can cut near the outer edge of the case without fear of damaging the wires. Think the wires inside there, those tiny little things, are nice and protected. The 2N3055 is an NPN transistor. It has two separate areas with N-type material and one with P-type material. The N-type area is connected to this leg, or pin, called the emitter, and the other is connected to this leg, called the base. The P-type material is connected to the case itself and is called the collector. To see which way of wiring it worked best, I did some tests by connecting it all the different possible ways and measuring both the voltage and the current. You can see that connecting the circuit through the collector and base gave me the most power. My experiments with sunlight were done before these tests though and use a second best option with the two N-type areas, the base and emitter, connected together. So here's what I've done. This is an NPN transistor, so the collector and the emitter, the two pins or legs on the back, are the N side, and the P is the base, or the case of the transistor. So here's my test setup. Um, I've got my digital meter, and I'm going to hook the positive lead to the uh, either base or collector, or one of the legs in the back, doesn't matter which, they're both connected together. And then the negative is going to the case. So the electrons will flow from the positive to the negative. Okay, so I've got it on the volt scale right now, and what you're seeing right there is um, 0.41 volts, so 400 millivolts. If I go to the millivolt scale instead, you can see it's 413 millivolts. All right, now what happens if I cover the solar cell? So if I cover it, you can see the voltage drops. I'm just covering it more and more and more, trying to really, really cover it. It's surprising how much you have to how much you get, even though it's still not complete, you know, <laughs> it's hard to cover it completely enough to get that down to zero. Okay, so that's 200 millivolts with it covered, and if I uncover it, uh, back to around 413 or so, 420. Now I'm, I'm going to put it on the, change these around for measuring current. Okay, I've switched the leads around right here, uh, so that I'm on the uh, mic microamp scale, and uh, now I'm reading about 4,000 microamps, which is 4 milliamps. And if I cover it, and you can see it drops right down, that's 300 uh, microamps. I'll uncover it, and I'm back to around 4 milliamps. So the total power is uh, 4 milliamps times 0.4 millivolts, which gives you about 1.6 uh, milliwatts, 1.6 milliwatts. Okay, I got this Fresnel lens here. So watch what happens when I focus light on it. So here's the normal current, around uh, 4.9 milliamps. Put the light on it. We're up to five, and I'll try to focus it a little more. Whoa! <laughs> My meter has trouble around uh, just over 5,000 microamps. I'll try switching to the milliamp scale, but that doesn't really help. Yeah, as you see, it's not giving me a proper reading anyway. No matter what I do, nothing changes, so that's no, no good. And of course, if I switch to the volt scale, there I'm at about 0.49 volts. And if I put the light on it, it goes up. Yeah, I'll put the light on again. So these types of solar cells don't give a lot of power. The best I got outdoors was around 500 millivolts and 5.5 milliamps, which works out to 2.7 milliwatts. To power a single 15 watt compact fluorescent light bulb, you'd need over 5,000 of them. But you can power a small desktop calculator, as I'll show in another video. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org. There you'll find my video on how I use a bunch of these transistors to power a small calculator. There's also a video on how to make a solar cell using just a copper sheet and some salty water. And there are many other similar solar videos, including one about using a Fresnel lens taken from a rear projection TV as a solar cooker. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos.
or give a thumbs up or leave a question or comment below. See you in a bit.